a very common question that students have is which test should I take? Should I take math level one or should I take math level two? And in this video, I'm going to give you some guidelines as to how you make that choice. Now, the first thing you should know is that the majority of students do take math two, math level two. In fact, it's about a two to one ratio. So this math two is definitely more popular. Some people would argue that the math one test may not be worth it just because it's not that hard, but I don't necessarily agree with that. I think it's worth it to take what you can take. If you can do well on math one, that's better than not doing any test at all. But certainly if you can do math two and if you can do well on math two, that's preferable to doing math one. I would say that's a, a fair statement. So how do you know which one to take? Well, if you've completed pre-calculus and if you got a good grade and if you're comfortable using a graphing calculator, then take math two. If you've completed trigonometry and algebra two, and you don't expect to complete pre-calc in time, or if you're like in the middle of pre-calc and you're still shaky on it, or if you did pre-calculus and you didn't do very well, then math one is probably the better choice for you. But in the end, you should ask your math teacher. Your math teacher will know you better than I can, because I haven't worked with you every single day like your math teacher would. So your math teacher would, in theory, be able to give you better advice on this. But these are the general guidelines. The other thing is find out which test uh, applicants to your colleges take. So if you're applying to a certain school that's more competitive, you might see that the majority of the students who go there take math too. You might find that out. So you might want to do a little research online, call the school, find out basically which test is uh, more common. And if there are any requirements, now I don't think any school is going to require one test over the other, but you never know. Some may really only want to see math too. It's a possibility. So just make sure you've got that cleared away. In terms of the differences between the tests, well, first, there's some significant areas of overlap. Uh, they both touch on ge algebra, they both go through some coordinate geometry, statistics, basic trigonometry, a few other things. Uh, they both have 50 questions, they allow graphing calculators, and they give the same reference information. So there's some overlaps, but of course there are differences. Uh, I, in later videos, I'll go through more detail on the topics covered in the tests, but this is just to show you some broad differences between them. So for Math 1, uh, for example, there's no questions that require you to use radians, it's all in degrees. In terms of geometry, it's mostly plane geometry, so, you know, circles and finding sides of things and areas, and um, right triangle trigonometry. So basically Sokotoa, knowing the relationship between angles and sides and a right triangle, it's basically as far as, as the trig goes. In terms of statistics, they only do linear regression, it's when they do it, which is not very common, but only linear regression. And all this kind of comes together in saying that the scoring curve is therefore less generous, because it's generally an easier test the scoring curve is not going to be pretty um, useful for you at the top end. So usually if you get one wrong, that's enough to knock you out of the 800s. Again, the curves depend on the test, but generally you don't have a lot of room at the top. Compare this to Math 2, where you're going to have generally a more advanced treatment of a lot of the similar topics you're going to see in Math 1. You also see, see some additional topics. Um, so you're going to see more complex geometry, more complex trigonometry. So you'll see Law of sines, law of cosines, graphs of sines and cosines, periods, uh, frequency, ample, all that kind of stuff. You'll see uh, complex numbers. I believe there are complex numbers a little bit on Math 1, but Math 2 definitely goes into a bit more detail with that, graphing them, for example. A uh, little bit more on series, like, uh, uh, what's the word? Um, recursive series, uh, geometric arithmetic series, a little bit more in depth here. Vectors, matrices, maybe some things you've never really covered in math that much. Standard deviation, same thing. Maybe if you've done a statistics course, you'd be good on standard deviation, but maybe not so much uh, if you haven't. Though, as we'll see, the standard deviation stuff is actually pretty easy. In addition to linear regression, there's quadratic and exponential regression, so you need to know how to use your calculator to do that. And the biggest difference here, I think the most important, is the curve, because this test is harder, is much more generous. As I'll say in the videos when I go through some of the harder questions, the test is not designed for you necessarily to have to know everything. There are likely to be topics on the test that you've never gone through in math class or that you just didn't go through in much detail or you don't remember, whatever the case may be. But there's quite a bit of room at the top. You can usually get five, six, seven wrong and still get an 800. You know, again, it depends on the curve. But there's much more room at the top because they know you're not going to know every topic. So they adjust the scoring curve accordingly. So keep that in mind, that there's a generous curve. So even if you don't know every topic, as long as you know the majority pretty well, you'll be good to go. So that's it for the differences between Math 1 and Math 2. Hopefully that helped guide you a little bit more. Feel free to contact me if you have any questions about that. But again, your math teacher is probably your best bet in terms of giving you the most specific advice for you. So let's talk a little bit about the basics of these tests.